You're moving to Florida? Is that the story? Well, did you know that we get four feet of rain every year? Sometimes a foot of that comes in just a few minutes time. Did you know we have animals large enough to eat humans? Did you know that the natural habitat here, the bugs and things that eat us and eat our houses actually defy our very existence? Folks, if you're planning to move to Florida and you haven't already, you're gonna add me to your Christmas list because here's why. You already know the headline realities. It's crazy expensive. It's no longer an arbitrage move to move from Chicago here or to move from New York upstate somewhere to here. Also, never mind that the craziest news stories that you've ever heard come from some crazy Florida man somewhere. Folks, I've got 10 major reasons that if you're considering moving here, you might want to really think long and hard if it's the right decision for you. And folks, it is a public service because even if you bought in the most appreciating area, home prices last year went up the most. If you were to turn around, feel like Florida was a bad decision and leave the market, you'd be paying in to resell your home again. So as the market slows down, it's dramatically important that if you are planning to move to any state, including Florida, that it's a fabulous decision that you can live with for many, many years because chances are housing prices here, like many other places in the country in 2024, are not going to skyrocket well enough for you to put your house back on the market and expect that house to fly off the shelf, especially without you possibly doling out thousands of dollars in order to pay that mortgage back off in order to get out of here. For someone who's lived here for 20 years of my life, as well as having lived 15 years out West, I can give you a very unique view of what it's really like to call the Sunshine State your home. So if you appreciate the honesty about Florida, smash the like button and let's get into the top 10. Record high mortgage levels are starting to take their toll. The mortgage rate is at 14 and three quarters percent. Ask not what the Great Reset can do for you. Ask what you can do for the Great Reset. The number one reason to not buy a home in Florida will be underwater soon. Not making light of this, folks. Many of you put these in my comments on a weekly basis. Hey, isn't Florida going to be submerged soon? Isn't it dangerous to live there? Well, I'm going to prove to you that that may not be true, but let's take a look at what the headlines say. When will Florida be underwater? Here's what scientists predict. Climate change is causing sea levels around Florida to rise, but when will, assumption is it's coming soon, it's going to happen. When will Florida be underwater? It says, by 2100, okay, so at the end of the century, scientists predict that a lower third of the state, okay, that's like almost the central Florida could be completely submerged. According to NOAA's 2002 sea level rise, that by the end of this century, bottom of the article, it says sea level range could elevate up to seven feet. Now, folks, every time I hear these doom and gloom scenarios, I always am wondering why the people that are actually promoting the idea do nothing about the situation themselves. Now folks, what I'm about to say has nothing to do with politics. I am fully aware that the right hand completely does not believe that we are in as much danger on the climate side as the left hand does. So if we are going to test the credibility of said threat, we need to look at what the left hand does about living near the ocean. Take a look at this. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez moved her mom to Central Florida in 2019 because of property taxes. The mother of Soak the Rich Congressman Alexandria Cortez said she was forced to flee the Big Apple because her property taxes up north were over $10,000. So, okay, folks, we know Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is not a climate change denier. She knows. In fact, she was the queen of the New Deal. The Green New Deal, you remember several years ago, came about, possibly it's coming back in another year or so, but here's the reality. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, we believe from this beautiful photo, loves her mother. Why would she move her mother to a place that could possibly submerge and drown her in a catastrophic flood? You'll all remember that Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, he himself is not a climate change denier. So it says right here, when he left Amazon, NPR covered him handing off the reins as CEO. And when he left, the reason he left was because he wanted to pursue philanthropic pursuits such as addressing climate change. So what does Bezos do next? He buys a $79 million so-called billionaire bunker. Take a look at it right here in the middle of the photography. Beautiful house. But folks, that's not the only thing Bezos did when he moved to Miami, which by the way, last I checked, Miami's on the lower third of the state. Bezos, don't get me wrong, he's a regular guy like the rest of us. Are we all gonna believe that? You know this guy gets details and intelligence and has resources as a scientist 
that he rubs elbows with, that he literally can speak to on this particular matter. But folks, he did not stop at buying the $79 million mansion. It says in the news that a month later, he reportedly bought a $68 million mansion directly next door to his first billionaire bunker. And now he owns two palatial mega mansions side by side. That is probably the second one's going to be bulldozed. But folks, the good news is that Bezos's property is most likely really far from water. Oh, it's actually waterfronting. Get out. It's waterfronting and it's on the southern tip of Florida. The actual place that's first most likely to submerge itself underwater. Folks, listen, this isn't about politics. I got nothing against anybody. I don't care if you vote for red or blue. I don't care. Here's one last photo for good measure. That water you see back there behind Barack Obama's vacation home in Martha's Vineyard, that's not a retention pond, folks. That's the ocean. Listen, folks, no matter your view, I want to stay friends. Let's not get all political and tribal to the point where we're bigoting each other. But listen to this. If you would say, Jared, you've missed something. You've missed Bezos. You've missed something on Alexander Ocasio-Cortez. You've missed something on Obama. The fact they live on the water is really nothing to do with their view. They still believe the climate's changing in the degree that this is a danger of all this submerging from the coastal edges. If I'm calling that wrong, drop in the comments. Help me understand that. Secondly, if you believe that the scientists, the leadership that are pushing the notion that Florida's going underwater, do you think there's some malintent on that narrative? If so, drop in the comments. Let's deliberate it down below. Reason number two to avoid Florida, it's probably much more expensive than where you're coming from. Folks, we had a phenomenon during COVID called geographic arbitrage, geo-arbitrage for short. It's the tactic of moving from a high cost living area to a much cheaper town or sometimes country and then working out with your current employer from the area you're coming from, that higher paying New York City, Chicago, California paycheck, keeping that check and moving to a much lower cost of living. But folks, I got to tell you, if you haven't looked at Florida in a while, it's much more expensive than you know. And in some cases, in all likelihood, has well outpaced the cost of where you're coming from, so much so that that alone would cost you to lose interest in moving here. Let me show you the numbers. So right here on this chart in Miami, you can see where I'm coming back to 2020. October of 2020, this was just after we locked the country down and we're reopening and things start getting fired up. We'll call this the bottom of this hill, which the red line represents how much it cost for you to own a home in Miami at this time, which was $1,465. You'll see it has doubled in a matter of three short years to $2,818. Now look at rent, folks. Rent was already higher. It was about $1,800, $1,900 the same period of time, and now it stands at nearly $2,800 as well. But folks, let me point out something further. This ownership line is actually considerably higher than what you see registered here because the data provided me is based on a factor of the national average for hazard insurance. As you know, national property insurance to insure your home in Florida is far expensive than anywhere else in the country. So anywhere else in the country you're paying on average around $1,700. In Florida, you're paying more than $6,000, and I've heard estimates from insurance agencies saying property insurance averages are going to go up 20 to 30% again next year to as high as eight grand on average, which means, folks, if you look at this number, it's actually more like 33, 3,400. But if I bring you back here, you'd say, well, Jared, isn't that five, $600 extra insurance not being factored back here in October, 2020? Well, in October of 2020, it was probably three to 4,000 a year cheaper. Now, forgive me if I just gave the quote earlier and I said six to 8,000 a month. It's six to 8,000 a year. It's an annual cost. Every time I say month, purely accidental and people freak out in the comments. But the reality is back then it was far cheaper. The average in Florida shooting off the top of my head was probably between 2,600 and 4,000 a year back three short years ago. Now it's 30, 40% higher than that. It's, it's increased quite a bit. Folks, look in Orlando. October 2020, cost to own a home, $1,314. Now it stands at $2,456. Like I said, what would probably have been $1,500 to $1,600 back then is now close to $3,000, maybe plus $3,000 a month to own a house in Orlando. Folks, let me show you one other thing. Housing cost is very simple. We might try and overcomplicate it, but year after year, it's only a factor of local salaries versus what the house costs. Now, this chart I'm showing you right here shows even in the peak of the last recession, we traded our houses in Jacksonville at six times earnings. So back then, 
people were making annually $33,151, according to the Census Bureau, and the ratio climbed to 6.1 times that average earnings. Now look where it's at now, folks. It's at 6.6. .6. You can see a running average down the middle that Jacksonville runs on, okay? So if you balance everything out, it runs at 4.6, which means that this marketplace might have to shift nearly 30% in home price to bring it back down to its known balance. Look at Miami, even worse. Miami's resident makes $50,000 according to the Census Bureau and has to pay 9.2 times their annual income in order to own a home. Look at this, in the last peak, 7.6. One of the factors with Miami is that if you wanna live there, you have very tight supply of rentals, you have very tight supply of ownership. It is one of the tightest places in the state to actually try and get in. And people coming from out of the area may just not be interested in fighting that hard to end up getting a house that they actually want. Folks, let's look at a place like Chicago, perfectly illustrating the fact. Look at where Chicago is inflated in relation to its average. It's only 13% up, why? Their wages are higher. So in Chicago, the wage average is 57,500. That's like 15% higher than anywhere else in Florida, yet their average house across the Chicago metropolitan area is $306,000. So folks, let me show you this even further. Here you have Jacksonville. Look where Jacksonville was in 2020. If you wanted to buy a home, the average home value in Jacksonville was $246,000. It peaked last month at $358,000. That's a massive run up in price. Now let's take a look at the exact same month and year in 2020. Chicago's price was $244,000. Look where it's at today, just over $300,000. So you can see Florida's pattern of appreciation has well blown past some of these other markets that are historically higher cost or perceived as higher and more expensive. And I know many of you out of the North and some of these other cities are gonna come in and say, hey, you know what? Property taxes, property taxes. Folks, you buy a house in Florida now and you're gonna be paying for the property taxes. Yes, they're not gonna be as much as New Jersey, but they aren't gonna be cheap. And when you bundle that with the fact you're paying four, five, maybe 10 grand more per year, every year, just to insure your home, you actually might be just paying more to live here than live in the Northeast. And one of the more fascinating things that we all need to be understanding if we still stay back behind in Florida and still live here is that one in every 10 home sellers, 10% 10 of the selling public are moving out of Florida because they're no longer able to hold this geo arbitrage position and live in Florida while making those high incomes from everywhere else which means that as these people leave, they're gonna be putting houses on the market, which then are gonna be entertained by purchasers at the local income levels, which folks, those local income levels, as you can see, are seven, eight, nine X housing prices, which will not sustain, according to history, those prices are gonna to have to come down to meet what local demand can afford. Number three reason to avoid Florida, we have pests. And I'm not talking about the obvious ones. As soon as I say pests, everyone's thinking about mosquitoes. We have sharks. We have alligators. We have cockroaches the size of small kittens. And termites here are ferocious enough to literally collapse your house. All kidding aside, folks, you might have remembered a few short years ago, Disney experienced an attack on property that killed a two-year-old boy. This article just came out in local news saying that seven of the 10 most alligator-infested lakes in the United States are actually in Florida. Many of these actually across central Florida. And further, you have articles like these are common. These are in the news all the time where they say, monster 11 foot alligator found taking a dip in a pool in a Florida home. Yes, they do climb fences. And yes, most people say, hey, Jared, I'm buying in this neighborhood over here. There's a little retention pond. Do you think there's alligators in it? High chance there is. Honestly, folks, if most locals are being honest with you, the mosquitoes are the worst. And if you're anywhere near inland water, like retention water, Mosquitoes will swarm and they will attack and they come in mass and they're super annoying and they carry disease. And folks, I was half messing around earlier. I did walk a flip property less than a week ago that was tore up by termites. And the way termites attack real estate is they actually come from the ground. So they eat their way towards the roof. And in this particular property, all through the home, well up to chest high level, you could just push on the two by fours and your fingers would go straight through it to the exterior of the home. I had to sign a waiver to go in and walk it. And in all likelihood, that's probably because it's a collapse risk. You could probably lean on it and push the thing over. If after hearing my 10 steps, you still come to Florida and buy a house, 
be very cautious about buying what's called frame and stucco homes. Those are homes that were built on the bottom floor out of wood. Second floor built out of lumber is fine because it's usually sitting on concrete walls for the first level, but you're taking great risk buying a Florida home made out of wood for the reasons I outlined here. Reason number four to avoid Florida, it's crowded. It's not as slow and laid back as you might think. We're surrounded on all sides by beaches. Our popular interior cities have major theme parks and major sports teams. When school lets out, all of these areas, which are typically crowded all year round due to our warmer weather, they all get pushed to the max. Granted, there is some subtle downtime in August and September, but then in October and November, snowbirds. You have a massive amount of people from up north that do come here, stay here seasonally for several weeks before they end up going back home in the early parts of the year between January and March. So it's something to think about. If you were drawn to Florida by your visit here, meaning you enjoyed the beaches, you love the weather, you love being close to theme parks and things of that nature, understand it's much, much harder to find downtimes and slow seasons in many of these areas due to our explosion in population growth over the past few years. Now, a point of comparison. For 15 years, I had lived in Las Vegas as an adult before moving back to Florida. Because I grew up a Disney nut here in Orlando, when we got to Las Vegas, I held annual passes for Disneyland, which was just three and a half hours away for all of us to go to. And we did somewhere around 50 to 70, 80 trips over the time that we lived in the West. Now, those of you who have visited Disneyland know that by comparison, the parks are way smaller than the Orlando parks, but also the crowd sizes in Anaheim can be much, much lower on the slow seasons than you can ever find in Orlando. So if you've considered Florida that Southern respite where you think you can kick back and get away from traffic and crowds, that may not just be the case unless you move out in the country somewhere and by then you probably won't have any working Wi-Fi. Reason number next, Florida has a lot of bad drivers. Now before you go thinking I'm going in the obvious direction on this, you gotta understand, Florida by itself, if you haven't tracked the headlines on the national level, we have some of the craziest people living among us. But we have a very diverse local populace, not just the young, not just the old, but we also have the out of country. We have very high levels of tourism. Some of our metros are really built based on retiree, have very high median age. Now hear me, I have folks that I love in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. And one thing that I've noticed by comparisons, folks in the upper end of their life that's comparable to the lower end or the younger crowd is a desire for independence and freedom behind the wheel. And I don't say this in jest, I have people that I care about that drove and held a firm grasp on maintaining their driver's license far many years maybe than beyond what they should have all in an element of maintaining that independence. But folks, if you go around some of the high touristy areas or you travel in any of the diverse areas around Florida, you will find out that there is going to be several near misses. There's gonna be people driving way over the speed limit and there's gonna be people in the left lane driving 30 miles an hour below the posted speed limit and could care less if there's a line of 10 cars behind them. So if you've got the hand-eye coordination of a top level gamer, the patience of Job, or you just enjoy a challenge getting to work every day, Florida just might be for you. Reason next why you may avoid Florida, cost of living is going up in 2024. Let me get very specific on this particular point because it's very different than what I said earlier about geo arbitrage changes. This is gonna affect you based on how your credit is, how much debt you carry, all those different things. Now look at this. New homeowners in Osceola County could see their property taxes double. So there's a warning for all of those coming in the marketplace, buying newer homes that are expecting a massive hike in their property taxes. Now we are cheaper than most states across the Northeast. So people on the Eastern side of the US, most of the folks up North are spending more than us, but I would just give you a rule of thumb. If you're spending around $600,000 on a house, you're probably gonna see a tax bill annually between 6,000 and maybe $8,500 probably more in the mid range. And when you move in, when you set a new price for the property you purchase, the following season that taxes are gonna be assessed are gonna be based on that new sale price. But let's talk about insurance because this is a huge factor that most people don't know about. And I need to thank a channel member who actually called me direct to tell me about the fact that despite our insurance costs being $6,000 annually, projected to go a little higher, and I'm gonna go into the meat of why that is and what you can expect if you move here, as well as some tips to make sure you avoid getting raked when you buy 
and, and have to face the insurance cost that's inevitable and what could potentially become a shocking bill one year that you just aren't expecting because insurance companies can adjust your bill. I've heard as much as two, maybe three times a year, they do reassessments to see exactly what they should be charging. And again, I will say three times a year is extreme, but here's the point. Let's look at this update. This is from the USA Today. They said Florida, because of an unstable market, Florida homeowners are paying the highest average premium in the US at 6,000 annually. It's 102% cumulative increase over the past three years is what I just pointed out earlier in this video. Now listen, property insurers lost more than 1 billion per year in 20 and 21. According to a February 23 IIII issue brief, the state's largest insurer by far is Citizens, the insurer of last resort, which is a state backed company that's basically there to provide for people when they can't get anything from the open market. Listen to this, Florida has been the most volatile property insurance market in the US for several years, primarily to two man-made factors, legal abuse and claims fraud. Lawsuits, listen to this, around 76% of all homeowner insurance lawsuits in the US, 76% were filed in Florida. That means that 24% of all the other insurance lawsuits were all 49 states combined against Florida. The article goes on and says the abuse of the legal system made six of the state's residential insurers insolvent that same year caused 12 insurers to pull out and put 24 on financial solvency list. You got to understand we only had like 39, 24 of them were put on solvency list. Six went completely out of business. You know, so we had major, major problems where everybody likes to come into the comments and I've done this video before. In fact, if you go in November, there's a huge detail that I go over. It talks about what exactly Governor DeSantis did and didn't do and what led us to where we are now. It's got like 400,000 views. But one thing you need to plan for is this. If you are into older homes with character and you're coming to the state and you're like, I don't like cookie cutter newer homes, be very careful. In fact, if you can find an address of one of those homes that's like what you're talking about and do your best to get some form of estimate on what a product that you would want to live in actually will cost you an insurance because there are older homes, the beautiful homes with character. There's folks all over the news. You can see stories on the extreme where people are paying three, 4,000 a year for insurance. There's some people I've heard stories over 30,000 a year. All right. Crazy numbers. And to take it a step further, your insurance is also affected by your own personal history. This was something that came to me by a whistleblower on my own channel. Thank you for this, who said you need to look up Lexus Nexus because all insurers run you through a system that rates you by literally pages and pages of risk factors. And you could have excellent credit and still be in the middle of the grade as far as how you get priced for insurance. So if you borrowed against your credit cards recently, if you use too many credit cards, if your credit drops, all these kinds of things can jack up your insurance cost on top of all the other factors. Now, if you aren't entirely picky on the home you pick when you come to Florida, you are going to be better served in the lower risk areas. So areas that don't have as much storm damage. You're also going to most likely experience better premiums if you're buying a house that's brand new or nearly new. Those homes have brand new roofs, brand new systems from electrical and plumbing. Those are going to save you the most in insurance and in all likelihood, as much money as the builders are throwing at buyers these days to get them into homes in Florida, you can get your interest rate paid down maybe into the 5% rate for a 30 year fixed. You might even be paying less for that house than one of the resale homes that's three or four years old down the street competing with a brand new house that no one's ever slept in before. But best of all, you'll have decently low taxes for the first year or so till those taxes catch up, assess what the price you paid, in all likelihood have some of the most affordable insurance that you can get in the marketplace for Florida. The next point to consider is a prediction and a reason to avoid. Over the past three to five months, Florida's unemployment rate has been climbing. Now the month I'm shooting this video, it's at 2.8%, which is near 100% employment, and our national numbers are a full 1% higher than how tight the market is here in Florida. But we are on a loosening trend, and what that means is you need to make sure you don't consider that your job is guaranteed. This is just a courtesy, folks. In Florida, we're seeing job losses in information sectors and technology sectors, and we're really picking up our gains in leisure and hospitality. Now, that may be the market segment for you, but I would tell you, as you consider moving here, if your career field is at all a question mark, 
and that is a big play for you. Make sure you do your research ahead of time before landing in Florida. Next reason to avoid Florida, if conservative values stress you out, then Florida may not be the place for you. Now, I got to admit, as I understand the history of Florida, Florida actually had a lot of blue governors in the 1980s, 1990s. Then they like to say Florida kind of went more purple in the early 2000s, maybe towards 2010, 2016-ish. But with the last few elections, it's very clear that Florida has a very loud voice on the conservative side, so much so that Ron DeSantis passed many conservative pieces of legislation in his first term of governor and then was overwhelmingly brought back in as the second term governor for the state of Florida. Another great point to discuss in the comments do you like DeSantis? Do you think he's done a good job? Drop down below and tell me because here's one thing we do need to sort out. That people that live in Florida are very vocal about their ideals of freedom and conservatism. Now Al Gore famously in the past week or two came out and said, hey look, we shouldn't have freedom of speech on social media platforms. He basically said we need almost government control algorithms to actually control and police thought that comes out of people's mouths in terms of what they illustrate in the public space. Now, I would say if you would follow that line of thinking and say, hey, you know what? I like what Al Gore said. I would say, and again, this isn't to be political. I'd say it's a perfect litmus test that if you would say, that's the kind of political move that I could get behind, you might be really agitated with some of the neighbors you're gonna find yourself living and talking with here in the state of Florida. Now, don't get me wrong. If you move into any major metro area, if you've got this idea that it's all whitewashed and it lacks diversity and it's a bunch of hicks and rednecks, or if you're LGBTQ and you feel like, you know what, it's going to be a rough life for me and there's no diver, that is not true. You can come visit any major city. There's evidence of views and ethnicities and a mixture of so many people that really get along and love one another. But I would also say there's a welcoming of ideas particularly to talk things out. I think most neighbors here want to hear from one another, want to hear their views, even when they're differing. Listen, folks, for you to call up your neighbor and say, I hate you based on what you believe, or I won't do business with you based on what you think about politics, that is bigotry. And I'm sure bigotry leaks out on all sides, but I'll tell you, at least on my channel, I don't want to make a home for that. If you believe different than me, I don't care. But let's be free to permit one another to exchange and trade ideas and tell each other where you're coming from. And Florida should resemble that. And I think it does in most parts of the country because honestly, most of the people in Florida anymore, it's grown so much in population that most people aren't probably Southerners. The people you run into might be from Puerto Rico, from Cuba, from South America, or from the Western parts of the US, anywhere. Florida is a massive, diverse melting pot, largely, I think of independent thinking people who say, hey, I appreciate freedom. I want the ability to move around, do as I want, raise my kids the way that I choose. And I would throw in a bunch of other conservative initiatives too that's important to a lot of people that live here, obviously. And if that is a sore spot in your side, you might hate living here. For the sake of the pithiness of this video, the last point that I'm gonna make is near and dear to my heart. We have no In-N-Out Burger. We only have a sparse couple Raising Cane's chicken places. We have no Cafe Rio, we have no Capriati sandwich shops, and we have very few Rosati's pizzas. Granted, we do have Publix and those amazing Publix subs. By the way, if you are in other parts of the country and you say, hey, Florida's missing this, this, and this as well, drop in the comments and let me know what I missed. We'll see you on the next one.